Tactical Jolt Mod Guide. Go. What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be modifying a Nerf Blaster, something that I haven't done in quite some time. And this is a blaster that is probably the most well-known Nerf Blaster out there. This is probably the most reskinned and it gets a lot of grief or praise, however you want to look at it, for being reskinned so many times by Nerf. And that is the Nerf Jolt. And I think we're gonna do a pretty simple mod. There isn't really much more to do internally to this, but we are gonna be adding an awesome 3D printed kit to it from Nerf Nerds. They sent it over for me to do a video or whatever I wanted with it. And I figured, why not? Let's do a little easy modification for you guys. Something, if you're new to modding, that is super easy to do and uh, should be a pretty fun little blaster in the end. So. Let's go ahead and crack this thing open and see if we can make it shoot even harder than it already does. All right, we're gonna crack this baby open and get some chronograph readings here just to give us a baseline, see what we're, we're getting out of the package. This is basically your most basic form of a jolt. You can pick this thing up, I'm guessing, for five bucks or less at pretty much any place that sells Nerf blasters. I'll put a link in the description to where you can pick one up on Amazon. And if you want to follow along and do this mod, uh, that'll be where to look for all these products. So we'll go ahead and see what we're getting here with this stack, with stock Elite Dart here. Oh my goodness. Well, it doesn't help when your hand gets in the way. It's a very small blaster. <laughs> we're not getting anything. Well, this is, this is not a good start. It's not even firing. See if we can get another one. Not firing at all. Well, so much for that. <laughs> I guess we're gonna have to remove that AR and uh, see if we can even get this thing to fire, let alone do our awesome modification. Okay, so this was not functioning super well out of the box. I'm not sure why. I think it has to do with the air restrictor. It's not depressing the way it's supposed to. I was able to get it to, I was fiddling with it. I was able to get it to fire like a couple feet, but not what it's supposed to do stock. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove that AR because we don't want it in there anyway. So we're gonna have to get inside here with the screwdriver, number zero screwdriver, take four screws out, pull this assembly out, and then we can knock out that AR. Let's get to it. Push the trigger in to pull that out. There we go. Don't lose any screws. Set that aside for now. And as you can see in there, there's a spring and your air restrictor. So we wanna get rid of this dart post and the AR. So I think some needle nose pliers and a flathead screwdriver will hopefully do the trick. You could also drill it out. That's a little more challenging because you have to have a drill that's sized perfectly to go in there. And it's a more expensive way to do it, you know, if you don't have that already. So we're not gonna do that today. I'm not even sure I have a drill bit anymore to do that, or at least one that's that small. I think the ones I have are bigger, but nevertheless, we will go ahead and try to knock it out with a flathead screwdriver and some needle nose pliers. So try to grab that post and then just twist and pull it out to start out. There we go, pretty easy twist and pull popped right off. Now in theory, if you have a good air restrictor, you should be able to shoot half darts now, but this one's not working properly. I'm not sure if this is common with jolts these days, this jolt. Uh, also, this used to be able to screw off. You can't do that anymore. So uh, spring replacement's a little more challenging, but we will figure all that out soon enough. But let's go ahead and knock the rest of the air restrictor out just so we have a clean airway for it to travel through and we shouldn't have any more firing issues after we get that air restrictor that's not working properly out of there. Probably not gonna be able to do this on camera, but you basically want to get your screwdriver in there and knock out the three posts that are inside there, try to get it out. So I'm just gonna use a rubber mallet. You can pretty much use anything and just tap slightly to knock out those posts. All right, so 
I removed the posts, but now it's still inside there, so we need to pull all that out. And I'm hoping I can get it out with my pliers, but that could be a bit of a process. We might have to chip away at it a little bit more uh, to get it small enough to be able to come out the hole. I'm gonna try to pull it out from this side, but we will see how that works. Well, there's part of it fell out. Okay, so I got out a lot of it, but there's the piece that's floating in there still. And if we can somehow get it to stay on the back side here, we shouldn't have to somehow, you know, break it into pieces and pull it out. Cause it is kind of difficult to pull out. And I'm a little worried if I really go to town at it, I might break the back of this blaster or, you know, do more damage. So I'm thinking about trying to get some glue on the back side of that and then just glue it to the back. And that actually will take up a little bit of dead space. And I think that'll be the best solution. I think we'll just put a little bit of glue on a, I don't know if a toothpick will be long enough, but something to reach in there, put some glue on the back side of that and try to hold it with my screwdriver back to the back here. And hopefully that'll stay back and then we'll have a clean airway. All right, so I ended up going with hot glue and it worked great. I just put some on the end of that and then pushed it back, held it there for a few seconds and we're good now. Went ahead and put it back together and we are firing darts now, which is, you know, an improvement, obviously. So put it over the chronograph, was getting mid 50 FPS with full lengths and a little bit better with half lengths. Wish my finger was a little smaller, I could push that back further, but half lengths are shooting pretty darn good, which is what I think is gonna work awesome with this guy right here. So we'll get to that in a second, but I think we can do a little bit better than that. I think with a spring upgrade, we could shoot a little bit harder and I don't have a perfect spring for this blaster, but I'm hoping this is gonna work. And I don't really know what this spring is intended for. This looks about the same diameter or is basically the same diameter as a retaliator spring, but it's shorter than a retaliator spring. And I'm guessing it's probably seven kg, eight kg. Hard to really know there, but definitely beefier than what's in there, but it is probably too long, obviously. So I'm gonna have to cut it down and then getting it on here and getting that spring off is gonna be a challenge. So let's go ahead and remove those four screws and take a look at that. All right, so this is the stock spring and there isn't really a great way to get this off. The easiest way is to cut it off. Let's see how many coils it is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I guess. And this one's, I think like 12 or 13, but obviously the distance between the coils is a little bit bigger here. This is a little tighter, but I think we're gonna have to cut this down a little bit, probably to the same, hopefully the same length as this should work and then hopefully we can get it on. So I'm gonna get some uh, bolt cutters, some small bolt cutters and uh, cut this guy off. That's probably the best way to do it. Make sure you wear eye protection when cutting stuff like this also. You could do it with a Dremel, a little more dangerous, but I have bolt cutters, so I'm gonna use that. We removed that, but uh, definitely took a, a nick out of my finger. Those things are sharp when you cut it off, and this is just a very tight situation, so be careful. Uh, just kind of grazed me there, but the finger likes to bleed. You know how it is. I just really hate that Nerf has gone to this. I mean, it just is, makes it so much harder and not nearly as nice to mod uh, or do a spring replacement anyways, which is the major mod uh, to this blaster. It's, unless your air restrictor is not working like mine, and then that was a pretty major one. But uh, if you could just unscrew that, you can just take that off, put a new spring on, and put that right back in. It's super easy, but no, we can't do that anymore. Thanks, Nerf. But yeah, we'll go ahead and try to get this guy on there, but it just sucks that you have to go through so much effort, and it makes it a lot more dangerous to do it this way. But it is what it is. Okay, went ahead and cut that down a few coils. I think I cut off three. Hopefully that's short enough. We'll go ahead and try to wind this back on here and see if we can get a functioning blaster again. Use some pliers to kind of help you. 
And I might go ahead and file that down just so it's not so sharp. All right, I was able to get it on there. Had to work it on with the uh, needle nose pliers there at the end, but I think this should work. Um, let's see here. Should work. It can press this all the way down into the head, so I don't know, who knows? Maybe that whole spring could have got on there, but uh, that would have been difficult, I think, to get on, so, because you would have had to pre-compress it. Uh, so I think uh, cutting a few coils down there was perfect, and that should be good to go. Hopefully we can put this in there and just see what we're getting um, as is. We may need to do some lubrication. I think I'll lubricate this O-ring again, and we I don't know. We might need to improve the seal, but we may not. We'll see what we get without doing anything, and then maybe I'll go back and add some electrical tape under there, which is a very common trick, you know, either that or Teflon tape. And then that'll just give it a little bit better seal, but you don't want to go too much. So may not need it. Um, it's kind of hard to tell in this blaster because you can't really plug it very easily, but let's see if we can get, because there's a hole here. Uh, by the way, if you use a version that is not this orange one, uh, they have an orange tip on it, and you're going to have to remove that to get it to work with this kit. But we'll go ahead and put this back together because I can't really test the seal. <laughs> I feel like it's a little loose, but that may be okay. We'll go ahead and put this back on, and we'll see how we're performing now. All right, so we got it on there. It does catch, although it's a little harder. This is all eaten up, which makes it, that just really bothers me. Uh, but there's no real good way around it unless you want to remove that head and then try to reinforce it back on, which is way more complicated uh, because you, if you, there's a lot of pressure on that head and if it pops off, you're kind of screwed, obviously. So we'll go ahead and fire a dart off here. I think I did max out the amount of compression you can get with the spring. So uh, yeah, that uh, should work perfect. Half length. That shoots much harder. <laughs> You know, let's go ahead and just put it over the chronograph and see what we're shooting. All right, you guys, let's see what we can get out of this little sucker. Definitely uh, has a stronger prime, much more barrel since we removed that AR, which will help a lot. Uh, but let's go ahead and see what it gets with uh, stock Elite darts. 65, 64. So that's pretty close to 67. That's nice performance there. <laughs> Way better than the 50, around 50 or 55 I was getting at max with just an AR removal. So we've bumped that up quite a bit with the uh, spring replacement. 64, one more, 66. So mid 60s, so a little over a 10 FPS improvement just from removing the AR and I'm guessing it's around 50 FPS normally stock. I don't really know. I haven't shot a stock jolt in a long time or chronographed one at maybe ever. So uh, it's been a while, but let me know what you guys, if you have a chronograph, what you get out of your stock jolt. I'm guessing it's probably about 50 FPS at max. We'll go ahead and try some worker half link darts here and we'll give it a little extra shove in there. Maximize our barrel length. 77, wow, that's pretty good. There we go, now we're talking. 77. Another 77, so it really is good with half link darts. Gives, gives it a little extra barrel length to, to use there, and it's a pretty tight barrel on the, on the jolt. 79, so almost 80 FPS with half link darts. That's really good. We'll try one more. 73. Pretty darn good for this little tiny blaster. I, I'm, I'm impressed. All right. Now we need to install this guy. So I believe it just is a friction fit and I think you can just pop in this front part here and then tease in the back. And hopefully I can do that without breaking anything. There we go. Kind of had to push in the front the rest of the way. And we're locked in. Wish those oranges matched up a little bit better, but you know, painting this thing would be pretty easy to do and pretty cool. But I think we need to uh, put on some uh, optics and who knows what else I can find to put on here. But there's lots of options. Pretty sweet 
little blaster. And we also need to make sure we adjust this part and it looks pretty good. So, hey, let's go ahead and fire off a half lane dart and see if we can do it. All right, so I put one in there. You're gonna have to use your pinky to push it back in there. See how we do here. That worked. <laughs> pretty awesome. All right, you guys, we have completed our tactical jolt and threw on some uh, pretty awesome sights there. You know, a foregrip, a tactical light. I think this is a pretty practical way to set up your tactical jolt. I mean, I think all these things are super necessary for a jolt mod like this. I mean, I don't know how you could run a jolt any other way, really. <laughs> Just kidding. But this is truly awesome, really fun. And uh, yeah, it, it, it is definitely a, uh, a lol blaster. But uh, let's go ahead and take some shots with this blaster and... Uh, See what kind of performance we get with the kit on. Probably gonna hurt performance would be my guess, but we'll go ahead and try some full length elite darts first. I mean, we do have a barrel that it could contact with, obviously, so we'll see. 62, not terrible. Whoa, well, that's what I was worried about, uh, hitting the barrel on the way out. I'm gonna definitely hurt performance, try to keep it still. There we go, Dubois 62. Let's try one more full length. Sixty three, very consistent, so that's good. So those didn't do too bad. We'll try a worker half length now. It's gonna be kind of hard to push that all the way back in there. Maybe it'll vacuum load a tad when I pull this. That's what I'm hoping for. 71. So it's shooting pretty good. 77. Seventy three, one more. Seventy. All right, let's put some shots over the range so you can really see this thing in action. All right, you guys, I got a elite dart loaded up. Let's go ahead and see what this thing can do. Hey, not bad. <laughs> this is just so fun. Hey, that's pretty good performance. We'll try a couple half lengths. A little shorter. These are heavier. Even though they're half lengths, they're still heavier, I believe, than Elite Dart. Well, that shot about the same distance. <laughs> One more here. Oh, wow, that one went really far. That was definitely the best shot. So if you guys are interested in this kit and building something like this, I'll leave all that information down in the description box. But this was sent to me by Ner Nerds, and he does this along with some really cool uh, blaster holders to mount on your wall. You can either mount them through with pegboard or I think you can also just screw the mount onto your wall and then mount the blaster and it uses the magwell to hold up the blaster. So that's pretty cool if you're using blasters that they're compatible with, obviously. Hopefully I'll show those off one day. I have to do some major work to my Nerf room before I could do that though, but definitely cool. But definitely check out his website if you're interested in the tactical jolt kit. And then I'll try to link some of these items down below, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to find. I, I think I got these off of Amazon. This I got off of Wish years ago, uh, but you can find, you know, knockoff EOTex out there. This is a really nice one. I got lucky with that. Obviously, the worker grip is from the Seagull. Uh, I don't 
think you can buy that separately yet, but uh, maybe you will be able to at some point. And then I think I got the, the tactical light off of Amazon as well, which I use for HVZ and it works really well on my uh, FDL. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this fun mod and review video. Peace out.